This is a Podco original. He was Boogie, who was the, the original, original cookie. cookie. Stephen Markarian. Stephen Markarian. Remember, without math, we are caveman eating mud. You here for the sham and shame, piggy boy? (laughs) (laughs) Devin's nips are being twisted, uh, much to his pleasure. Geometry? Literally go f*** yourself. (laughs) I loved the idea of math. Was not the greatest. No, literally, sometimes at night, uh, like my pinky hurts. From yeah, we're talking it, about pinky to, deformities. Yeah, from you guys know, iPhone. you know, your phone pinky, the pinky holds it at the bottom, and 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 slowly it's, like it's going numb it and breaking it. Yeah, pinkies are falling into obsolescence. It's too bad. <laughs> All <laughs> right, not guys. for me. <laughs> oh, hey, one in the okay. <laughs> Two in the what the hell? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Ned's Welcome back. Hey, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Hey, Lynn. <laughs> Lynn's here. Pull it together, guys. Hey, pulled, pulled, we're a new, snatched. improved, and classier pod now. We are. We are that. Emphasis on the assier. <laughs> oh, emphasis on the assier. Yes, we're the assiest pod out there. Classiest. <laughs> <laughs> so much going on there. All righty. So, All right. glad to have you back. We're going to do a rewatch hey. today, right? Woo! We're actually going to talk about the show. Yeah, season two. Season two, mm-hmm. baby. Let's go. So this uh, is the episode that went along with notes. With notebooks? It's notebooks. math. Our episode today is math, okay? And we are going to talk on it, all right? Great. Uh, it was written by Mike Priester. Remember that guy? Mive. Yeah, I do. My, oh, Mive Meyer. You know, I, I just wrote Wiggles on here. It's just Wiggles <laughs> connected to thoughts. Wiggles Priester. <laughs> so we don't know if this is Mike Priester, Meyer Mike Priester, Pri- or Price- Priester. Priester. Mike Priester. Mike Priester. But that's I-E. I, I know, but, but I feel I like thought, it was Priester. I it was Priester, right? Yeah. I'm just trying to think of how to say his name. I, I remember hearing I. Priester. Mike Priester. Yeah. Pre- Priester? Hey, Mike Priester. Priester. Hey, Mike I think he Priester. listens to the pod sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love you, Mike. Uh, or Mive or Meyer. Uh, yes, so written by Mike Priester. Priester, okay. Directed by David Kendall. Yes, yes, yes. yes. David Kendall, if you oh, haven't yeah. watched his episode, go watch it. Oh, yeah. Turn up. All right. Tell us, First things first, we open on a jolly young Ned traversing the James K. Polk halls with his... (laughs) (laughs) Yes, just just traversing those halls. He's just so happy. His gleeful friends approach with great news. Moe says, my class is starting pre-algebra. Then Cook goes, I got promoted to eighth grade honors math. I'm going to be an eighth grader for one period a day. The excitement. It's amazing. They are, they are stoked. So stoked. Oh, yeah. Stoked. Uh-huh. Yes. What losers. Ned. <laughs> Ned, on the other hand. Doesn't give a shit. <laughs> he hates math and he lets it be known. Okay. That uh, would be great if it wasn't about math. Right? Yeah, that would be great if it wasn't about math. I love that line. And uh, he's like, yo, we already know how to uh, add and subtract. Why do I need this other crap? You know? <laughs> uh, then, uh, just then, bullies approach with a math question. Uh, Bully Loomer's like, yo. I got four dozen eggs to throw at five nerds in chess club. How many can we throw at each kid? And Cookie goes, oh, that's easy. You got 48 eggs, so, I mean, uh, you throw nine at each kid, but you'll have three left over, right? Three, three left over. Ned's like, okay, what, what good would it do me to know that they have three left? And then all of a sudden, <laughs> Ned's back is soaked with yolk after uh, <laughs> being pelted by three eggs. Oh, poor Ned. Math matters, man. Uh, <laughs> then we have the little intro, uh, you know, for the episode. Coming up. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> the title uh, is scribbled into the guide. You know how it goes, guys. Uh, then after we exit that little title <laughs> sequence, Moe's pops in, uh, newsflash, Ned, you can't ignore math. It's everywhere. Yeah. All right. Then night, Ned gets a bright idea. Uh, and he, he says these nine words. Uh, all I need is these nine words. Create a study group with the smartest kids in class. And we all go, Ned, that's 10, ten words. words. Yeah, okay, a little moment there, a little moment there. Uh, and then Ned introduces 
Albert Warmenheimer Ooh. and the O Boats wins. These are his uh, his little math people that he's gonna be having follow him around. Dude, Albert Warmenheimer, is this the first time we've met him? Yep, I think so. I think so. For those who don't know, he was Boogie, who was the, the original, original cookie. cookie. Stephen Markarian. Stephen Markarian. Scott Fellows brought him back and he mm -hmm. nailed this role. Oh, this, so this, funny. This schizophrenic voice is yeah. talking. Amazing. Uh -huh. He nailed it. He nailed it, man. Uh, so him, yes, he does. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> yeah. uh, so Albert is there and the Oboe twins and they're Ned's answer. This is why Ned doesn't need math because he's a master manipulator and that's even better. Okay. Mm. Uh, so <laughs> the, the twins say to him, I'm Art excited. Art imitates life. <laughs> All right, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> the oboe twins these two uh young ladies they both uh, simultaneously say i'm excited about our group ned and it's so weird because they're saying i'm excited but they're both saying and the they same both time. sound like robots i'm excited about our group ned yeah it's yeah. this weird like kind of i don't know like they hit voices. a pitch that's like oh uh, i'm scared uh, of that by the way did they come on for more than this episode yeah they, did, yeah. they were on a few times my okay. sister and i became like homies with them the hoover the hoover twins yeah they were cool they lived down in newport they were like crazy and so fun so funny <laughs> oh. yeah. Nice. They they were not nerds. They played these like nerdy the oboe twins. They played these nerdy like math oboe nerds. But yeah. man, they were not. Like they were like centric. they were yeah. They were like athletic yeah. Orange County like fucking homies. They're like yeah, what's up? You gotta come down to the beach. Uh, they the shit. Nice man. <gasps> Uh, so yeah, so the twins, they do their whole little bit. We're excited about our group, Ned. And then uh, Albert's uh, super excited. Uh, oh no, no, yeah, Albert chimes in. He says, and I'm super excited. Somebody besides the voice of reason inside my head is actually talking to me. <sighs> And he keeps doing these like asides, like it's so funny. To he the starts voices in his head. arguing with the voice in his head, and he's like, uh, "The study group is a great idea." <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that whole thing happens. Uh, then all of a sudden, Gordy, while chasing uh, the weasel on a mop bucket slingshot um, with a melee style caveman club in hand, crashes into a door that has been slammed in his face by the weasel who has once again eluded him. Okay, so big old crash. Uh, Gordy, after the crash, he's a little bit, you know, loopy. He shows uh, an equation slash formula that he wrote to catch the weasel. And it's like a poorly written formula, like club plus mop bucket <laughs> uh, divided by blah, blah, blah equals caught weasel. And Ned's like, oh, it looks fine to me. And then Cookie says, yo, you need to factor in the mop bucket torque, top speed, plus the total weasel velocity. <laughs> and Gordy's not having any of it because he doesn't need math and he just storms off to uh, go and uh, attack the weasel again without the help of math. Uh, cut two. Ned's math teacher uh, is assaulted with spitballs by the students. And this was, uh, I think, Dr. Wren. It was the same. Yeah. Yeah. You guys had the yeah, same yeah, yeah. teacher. Yep. He was the substitute. The sub yeah. Um, uh, in yeah. substitutes or something, teachers. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Ned, uh, yeah, after we cut to that, uh, we see Ned leading his math cult gracefully. He's mm. issuing assignments mm -hmm. to Stacy and Tracy and Albert, okay? Um, Ned says to Stacy and Tracy, all right, you guys work on the board problems. Uh, his eager followers, oh, you know, they obey gleefully. Then Albert calls dibs on the homework. Oh, I call dibs on the homework, which is really great. <laughs> Everything's <laughs> working. Everything's working for Ned. Uh, then Albert asks, what are you going to do, Ned? Ned has a response. He says, how about coming up with a cool name for the study oh, group. It's not yet. <laughs> yeah, it's not the sign yet. Like cool the name. Math Magicians? <laughs> yeah, I love it because you said the Math Magicians. Mm -hmm. Math <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the victims agree. Uh, Albert argues a little bit more with his voice of uh, reason. He's like, it's a great idea. He's my new friend. <laughs> um, then we cut to Cookie uh, excitedly leaps up the stairs headed to uh, the eighth grade. He's headed to be an eighth grade. It's amazing. He crosses the threshold of the math class door proclaiming, this is gonna be... <clears throat> we reveal a drab Ukrainian gulag style, dark, gray, rigid, overly uniform classroom maintained by an authoritarian strong woman with a thick USSR time Ukrainian accent. Hey! Dr. Xavier. The Yo, Soviet Daniel, Union. He, he enters the Soviet Union. Daniel, your... Um, I actually wrote this in my notes. Your <laughs> response to seeing her, the jump back, was <laughs> so good. Like, oh. you seeing the class, and then, like, it was so just, like, 
<laughs> Perfect. I took it back and Locked I wrote in. it down. That was a big moment. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Xavier, like, was, I, I yeah. remember this. I remember that classroom, man. Um, yeah, and so, it, you know, just as, as we show this drab room, Cook goes, fun. So he's like, this is going to be fun. So I love that little bit that Scott <laughs> threw in there. Uh, and then Dr. Xavier begins to speak for the first time. She says, hi, hello, new student. I am Dr. Xavier, super genius. Now copy problems. All right, so she's uh, that was German, but around. I like it. It was a little bit more German than yeah, the that's okay. We Ukrainian all and Russian thing. Mm-hmm. Say so we all fail sometimes, listen, you know. Listen, it was still an accent. <laughs> hi, law new student. But, hi, law uh, new student. Hi, law uh, <laughs> cookie. <laughs> cookie rushes to his uh, cold metallic seat uh, <laughs> <laughs> in a room where the only pop of color that cuts through the gray is the green cardigan, green and yellow cardigan of a female student. Dot dot dot. Who might that be? Uh, and the, Wait, is this is this how we met her? Yes. This is the first time. Yeah, she was just a student that was brightly colored. That is, oh, that's a little that's, lackluster. She didn't have a line. I mean, that's so I know, weird. When I saw it's her, like a new character. When I was watching this, when I saw her, I was like, oh, this is Logan's first episode. And then she didn't speak, and you Same have no storyline with her. And I was like, I, I didn't rem- like I didn't remember that. I didn't remember her just being on for a moment. Yeah, she was yeah. just a student in the. Uh, she was yeah. an eighth grader in the like class. Like you and danced with her, blossomed. but there wasn't really a, a defining yeah. moment, no, which I yeah. that was kind of weird. But like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. She and you know, I, for some reason, stunning. I feel like I had, Scott did tell me she was the girlfriend character. Mm. Right. So maybe they knew the eighth. Like they knew they the were going to develop that story, it. but this was the first introduction. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, uh, so yeah, Lisa Zemo is going to have some uh, competition here. Oh. Um, and so, yeah, we're still in the classroom. Fix Doctor- your nose. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Jeez. Uh, then <laughs> what? This nasal spray. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's got to fix the nose. Man. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fix it. Fix it, big dog. Uh, then Dr. Xavier, we're still in the uh, the room. The gulag uh, says, remember, without math, we are caveman eating mud. It was better. It was oh, better. closer? It was, yeah, it was, okay. it was, it was more closer. Russian. I'll take closer. it, I'll take it. Um, <laughs> then we cut to the environment of Moses' classroom. Her math class is fun. The kids are all supportive of the teacher yeah, and receptive to his instruction style. However, everyone understands the problems except Moe's. Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> and she has the line, what's with the letters? Yeah, Where are you numbers? entered algebra? I'm going to tell you about my math experience Uh-oh. after this, okay. after the recap. After you sure mm-hmm. it's a long recap. Mm-hmm. You sure you don't want to? No, 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 yeah, no, no, it's no. scary as a kid when things shift from numbers to letters. Oh, oh fuck. I already learned that. I don't bit. want people to lose where we what are. What the fuck is X and Y? <laughs> so uh, then Moe's begins itching and scratching. Is she allergic? She must be. Mm. Uh, then we cut to a close on the weasel eating a conveniently placed uh, <laughs> box of weasel <laughs> niblets in the middle of the hall. <laughs> Gordy pulls uh, pulls against a giant elastic slingshot with a caveman boulder as its projectile. He's zeroing in on the strike. He's going to strike the weasel. However, being tied to a lightweight hallway trash can and a hallway locker, the tension causes the ropes to violently snap back, completely entangling Gordy. Mm-mm-mm. He's been foiled. Silly Gordy. Tricks again. are for kids. Yes, yes, yes. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Look. Guys, I get it. There's just not enough time in a day. There's only so many hours. I understand. But you guys don't skip out on your priorities just because you feel like you can't make time. You don't skip out on leg day. Don't skip out on therapy day. Mental health matters, and we have to take care of ourselves, especially in this crazy world. Look, guys, I've benefited from therapy. I know so many people, so many stories of others who have benefited from therapy, and you can too. If you're thinking of starting, Try BetterHelp. It's entirely online, super convenient, mad flexible, and it fits your schedule. Never skip therapy day with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Neds today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Neds. And uh, I got to also add in, Gordy kind of looks like a caveman in all of these Yeah, through the sequences. progression of this episode, he just... Mm-hmm. devolves yeah yeah yeah. it's great yep, yep, yep. fun to watch it's wild it's wild and yeah just showing him without math you know with caveman eating mud. uh yes. ned's future ned's really. future perhaps yes this is true this is true um cut to mose uh walks up to um walks up to gordy and says uh hey subtract the giant boulder and add an ice pack 
to your weasel catching formula. All right, so he needs to do it. But Gordy refuses math with a small sign because he's all tied up, but he raises a sign that says, oh, no, no math. math. <laughs> no, no math. No math, a la Roadrunner. Ah, yep. yes, exactly. yes, yes, yes. Coyote yes. Roadrunner. That's real, that's real. Uh, Ned then informs Moe's that she may have math anxiety. He's, uh -oh. he's going to diagnose her, right? She doubts it. Uh, she, she doubts ain't that no she way. has it. Yeah, ain't no way. And then she inquires with uh, Ned if he has it. And he's like, ah, nah, I suffer more from I hate Eat math, math syndrome. syndrome. I don't give good. a shit syndrome. <laughs> well, well, dang. Okay. If you had four shits in a day, mm. how many? <laughs> oh, damn. Shits did you take? Um, okay, then Cook runs up to the uh, trio and he adds himself to the trio. Uh, <laughs> I have a problem. I have a problem. That's the way he said it. Then Ned's like, talk to me. And then Cook's like, it's a math problem. Ned says, talk to most. <laughs> <laughs> don't want no parts of that. Um, and then Cook's like, yo, eighth grade is supposed to be fun and exciting, but honors math is boring and scary. Then Moe's offers a tip. Moe's is handing out the tips today. She says, hey, yo, if, it, if it's word problems you're studying, spice up the word problem, okay? Uh, make it a rocket blasting off towards Jupiter instead of a train leaving a station. You know, okay, it makes sense. Makes sense. Cookie's does it, excited. Does that, is that, that's the one tip I came across and it's I said. It's the one tip. Hmm. What's funny is your Mose is still in seventh grade. She's moved on to pre-algebra. Good luck. And uh, somehow eighth grade USSR math is still doing fucking simple word problems. Uh, well, it's, it's a little bit of calculus, though. Uh, calculus comes after pre algebra but, but yada, yada. Never okay. mind. We're not going to fight that. Daniel would know. You'd, you'd know. I mean, you know. Eh. Uh, Cook in math. Uh, Cook is back in the math room. Uh, and so he's reading off this word problem from Xavier. And he's spicing it up. He's like, okay, a werewolf uh, mixes a solution of milk, egg, flour for cupcakes. Xavier says, laborer. Not werewolf. <laughs> and then she's like, iron oxide and magnesium to make cement blocks. And that's what it's supposed to be. That's the actual word problem. Uh, an iconic moment uh, happens uh, where Xavier leans over the digital projector. <sighs> and this is where she says, look, I'm a big head watching you. Big fun. But that's in every uh, title sequence of Ned's. So know, true. From yep. this moment on. And your guys' jump scare. Yeah. yeah. We were yeah. Jumped back. Yeah, absolutely. Um, big fun. <laughs> big fun. Without math, we are cavemen eating mud. Uh, Cookie and uh, the other students cower in fear and feverishly, feverishly, I almost said feverishly, feverishly. Isn't feverishly. Isn't feverish. feverishly. Feverishly? Yeah. Feverish. Fever. It is feverishly. Yeah, it okay. is feverishly. Cool. Got to go with your first line, guys. Feverishly complete their assignments. Uh, and then it's montage time. You know, every episode of Ned's has a little montage in it. Got, yeah. a, got a montage. Montage. Ned is living the good life. He shows his cult followers <laughs> his gang tattoo. Look at that. All right. Then an iconic moment. Moe's hallucinates the blackboard with polynomial equations mm -hmm. swaying and moving behind the teacher erratically. She's like, oh, my God, where am I? I don't <laughs> understand. <laughs> she itches herself out of her seat. Oh, yeah, if she's I'm itching. not mistaken. She's itching. Uh, her math allergies are flaring up. Methallergies. Okay. Uh, Moe's to Ned. <laughs> Moe's to Ned. I am, in, I am in love with math. We're just going through a rough, itchy patch in our relationship. Okay, so that's a nice little line. There's always line. an itchy yeah. patch at the beginning of a... Well, it depends on the relationship there. <laughs> depends on if you've disclosed or not. Yeah, you gotta disclose that stuff, guys. Uh, okay, so yeah, so Devin is at the helm uh, of this gang slash cult, this uh, cult adjacent gang, the Math of Magicians. You, you've been there wow. before. <laughs> wow, interesting choice of words, Daniel. They, they run oh, up, fucking really interesting. <laughs> they run up to Ned in the hallway and they're like, hey, we finished our homework before we got home. I love that read. Uh, then we have some bad CGI. Uh, Dev's like, and I came up with the magic M. He throws his gang sign and gang he starts gang. to glow yellow just like this. He's a boss, all right? Shake. Bam, <laughs> Mississippi, baby, we in it. Fucking all right. Uh, now, then Dev says, or Ned says, when in trouble, just shoot the M and the mathemagicians come to the rescue. Word. Oh, yeah. Word up. It's a pact. They made a pact, guys. Word up. Uh, the voice in Albert's head doubts uh, Devin's plan will work. And he says, yes, it will. He's a genius. <laughs> it's great. The voice uh, of reason was saying, this guy's playing you. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then they, the mathemagicians, they flash the M, and they walk away excited. Uh, Moe's, don't expect them to do your homework forever. 
A little, little forewarning, Dev. All right, get it together, <laughs> Ned. Mm -hmm. um, oh, cool. Uh, yeah, then Cookie pulls up in this weird, strange thing. Uh, the strange suit is like a smock, a gray smock, boring oh. drab. Oh, yeah, so good. <laughs> and they're like... Utilitarian. Yeah, definitely mm -hmm. that style. Um, Moses is like, yo, what are you wearing? And then Cookie says, Xavier gave us math smocks. <laughs> She's trying to break my make eighth grade math fun spirit. <laughs> Um, yada, yada, yada. And then he pledges, but tomorrow it is she who will be broken. Uh, and then, then you give a crazed laugh that I, oh. I replayed. I, that was so, uh. you give this crazed, <laughs> and then you walk off a bit down the hall and turn around one more time. <laughs> I feel like it was so Daniel. It was so demented. It was, it was so amazing. I didn't know what you, to do with though, the moment. At the time. Yeah, I just, it was they, amazing. They nailed it because what I wrote down here is like um, determined Frankenstein's monster esque <laughs> music plays as Cookie yeah. cackles while leaving frame. Uh, but that that Frankenstein kind of sound like I don't know what piano that is, but it was, <laughs> they nailed it. It accented so much. Um, da -da 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 -da. Then we're back to Gordy's uh, storyline. In a poor attempt to unalive slash catch the weasel, Gordy ignites two giant missile-shaped fireworks strapped to his roller skates. Then there's more bad CGI. Uh, <laughs> of course, the skates explode, leaving Gordy charred and tattered. Um, do -do 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 -do. That whole business True happens. Coyote Roadrunner. We're oh, full yeah. cartoon land. Full yeah. cartoon land. I, I loved it, though. They started know, using so more fun. of the CGI to mm -hmm. sell stories you couldn't without it. Um, Ned is then in his math class again, all right? And uh, Albert Wormenheimer pulls up his sleeve to show him, hey, ooh, I got tatted, brother. And Ned's like, hey, you got a fake tattoo just like mine. And then Al Albert's like, yours is fake? <laughs> Cold world. Cold world. <laughs> and then Mr. Dren, the math teacher, um, says, hey, uh, if a positive times a positive equals a positive, what is a negative times a negative? Albert? He points to Albert. I was pretty surprised he didn't know this one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Why, why did you need to use the math Thought he signal was smart. There? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah like, what are you doing? But he, so oh, no, no, actually, they justified it. It was he was so distraught from the, the tattoo. The tattoo thing. I forgot. They actually justified, like, he was so distracted from the thing that he, oh. he like, <laughs> skips and taps Ned. Yeah, oh, got nice, it, got it, nice, got it. Nice. Uh, yeah, so Al, Albert, then flashes the <laughs> mathematician's gang sign. And uh, Ned, looking for Ned's help. Yeah, looking for Ned's help. Then Ned looks over and uh, <laughs> gives him. <laughs> he literally an just looks him up and down. Yeah, like, I go, mm -hmm. what? <laughs> what? Oh, come on, man. And Ned gives him the answer. He says, uh, uh, negative? Uh, yeah, and then uh, he was wrong. And it's a positive. Yep. And then it's so great. So he's been publicly shammed. Poor, I mean, publicly shamed poor Albert and shammed a little bit. Shammed and shamed. Shammed, shammed and, and shamed. shamed. That's usually how it goes for me. <laughs> Damn. One after the other. Is this a sham and shame? A sham and shame? <laughs> okay. Not hey, I'm, I'm here for the sham and shame. Pay <laughs> hey, good uh, money for that. <laughs> then Albert's like, I'm mad at him too. <laughs> Talking to his voice of reason. And Ned goes, oh, fuck. Oh, uh, yeah, he's blown it. He's blown it. I snorted really hard just then. That was weird. Was like a <laughs> oink going on there. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, piggy boy. <laughs> then, then we cut to. <laughs> Don't say that to him. <laughs> All right. I like it's that. a deep-seated pain. Yeah. <laughs> then we cut you to. here for the sham and shame, piggy boy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to fucking twist Good your Lord. Like, twist twist the them fuck nips. Off, twist them nips for those uh, those uh, not being able to view at home, your listeners. <laughs> Devin nips are being twisted, uh, much to his pleasure. Anyway, uh, all good. right, here we go. Uh, then we cut to the Cookie Make Math Fun Show. Oh, Dressed this was one of my favorite <laughs> moments of yours it ever. Fun. It was fun. That was like, I loved this musical number. It was so great. <laughs> Dressed like a bedazzled Frank Sinatra, complete with a sparkly fedora, uh, Cookie um, sings a song amid uh, multicolored stage lights. <laughs> <laughs> he sings directly to Vanessa. Uh, and he really, I, I, in this moment, I really felt like a ladies' man. Like, I mean, but it, it was, it's hard to feel like a because ladies' man. Because it was like, that, it's that whole like, da na 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 na. Uh, yeah, I'm like serenading like that, somebody. Like, yeah. It was, yeah. it was the sequin fedora, wasn't it? It had to be the fedora. <laughs> yeah, all of it. Um, and then it said, hello. Hello, it is I. <laughs> yes, I know. I cleaned up nice. Uh, then Xavier's <laughs> like, stop disruption. 
No one can learn. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do the song. Yes, I, I was literally. Yes. That was. I was literally gonna say. I don't know. I remember though at that time I was like, oh, this is way out of my range. I really can't can't hit these notes like I want to. I also just couldn't hit the notes. But uh, it it went a little something like this. We're in the eighth grade, but we're all dismayed. But six plus cookie equals fun. Uh, prime number divided, remainder can't hide it. Less it's that number. Uh, uh, number one. Yeah. Wow. That was it. Wow. That was a song I sang to my uh to my uh momentary it, crush. It was there. like a PBS broadcast. Oh, it was definitely like that's that. how yeah. it looked. No, 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 not like literally how it looked was like one of those <laughs> infomercials at night or whatever, because it was in like the with the with the, the swirling thing. Little, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. in front of I the, love that intro. Yeah. Oh, uh, man, but yeah, that was the little song. Xavier's like, stop disruption. No one can learn. All right, then uh, Vanessa stands up for Cookie, all right? She's like, don't be talking to my man like that. You out of your mind. Uh, <laughs> then she says, uh, she explains what she learned from the effectiveness of his instruction <laughs> methods. All right? Um, da -da 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 -da. Uh, but anyway, Dr. Xavier's not having it. She's like, no math song. Remember, without math, we are caveman eating mud. Xavier scares uh, herself uh, because she looks back at the projector and sees her big head and it uh, startles her a lot. That's so good. Uh, the victims of, uh, oh yeah, so now we're in the next scene. The victims of Ned's cult adjacent study group quit, all right? They uh, list their grievances off for Ned um, and Albert's like, yeah, the twins are quitting too. And they say, yeah, his inner voice thinks it's best. Which was kind of a weird line. It's almost like he's like a serial killer of sorts, and they're like, "Yeah, we don't want to, uh, you know, upset him." Maybe they would have stuck around, but he wasn't having it. Um, so he says, uh, "Everybody, it's a theory. <laughs> it's a theory. Just say, hey. you know, um, little Alex Jones. We were going getting deep in the woods." <laughs> then Albert says to Ned, "Hey, study for the test alone, and take the test alone." alone. I thought that was great, man. Me too. Then uh, Ned, realizing that he's alone, starts scratching. He's contracting symptoms of math anxiety. Uh, Mose is walking around with a bunch of ointment all over herself. She's dabbing it, you know, onto herself. And then she hands uh, some of that ointment to Ned. Uh, she's finally admitting that she does, in fact, have math anxiety. Uh, Ned says, OK, look, we're both dealing with this problem. But don't worry. I've got tips, some reassurance for her. Um, then he goes on to, you know, giving all these tips. Uh, sometimes math can be scary and confusing. And, you know, hey, even Albert Einstein struggled with it. Uh, one step to combat this is to be positive. Tell yourself you can do it. Uh, and also ask questions as soon as you don't understand. Mose takes, uh, takes this advice and she asks a question. Uh, and when she asks this question, uh, her teacher starts to explain it and the blackboard stops moving behind her she's been able to calm her mind enough to understand what the letters mean Ooh! so uh moses cured no more yeah. scratching uh math anxiety is in all of us uh is another tip that uh D D ned gives start a study group to make new friends and solve problems together but warning be sure to share the work evenly unlike uh ned ned then apologizes to uh his uh team you know what i mean well to the uh math magicians and he flashes the m hoping that they'll flash it back they judge him a little bit, and then they flash it right back at him eagerly. Great, man. Uh, but everybody gets an apology. We cut to uh, Cookie's eighth grade math club. Xavier apologizes for her old-fashioned ways, and she says, we can learn to enjoy math. We can learn to enjoy math. So today, we have a super fun math dance party. <sighs> and then she starts her dancing. Her dance moves were incredible. Oh, on in, bro. The yeah. thing out here. Yeah, yeah she was. Okay. Luc so, Lucia, right? I feel, like Lu there's Lucia. A, sorry, I feel like there's a standard like bad dance people go to, and she completely just made her, she did her, her own. own. It was amazing. Oh, yeah. Sorry, go on. Yeah, yeah no, I love her performance. And you were pretty Xavier. nervous to dance with uh, Logan. Oh, yeah. oh, for sure, for sure. And I thought it was going to be more, but it was like we still kept it. Yeah, it was. It wasn't a community community that we're dancing moment. together. Yeah. Right, right, you know? right, right. Uh, balloons fall from the ceiling. Uh, party lights roar. It's a rager complete with a plate containing one hot dog and six cupcakes. That's what I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Xavier comes up with a hot dog I'll and six, six cupcakes. <laughs> this is the party. I'm like, are we going to split the hot dog? How does the math work on that? Because um, you got a bunch of students there. Uh, Vanessa says to Cookie. It's a theory. <laughs> you did it. Math is fun. 
But now Xavier's even scarier. The kids all dance. Um, yeah, it's a cool little moment there. And Xavier, arms wide, says, new student, dance with me. All right. And they all are all dancing right. the night away. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Ned says, without math, there's no cars, no computers, no video games. You know, math's everywhere. Gordy's still trying to catch the weasel. Um, the kids are like, Gordy, your math is way off. All right, Gordy pulls <laughs> up. <laughs> he pulls, yeah, looking like a caveman. He pulls back a mop bucket slingshot one more time, uh, club in hand, and he speeds towards the weasel. But due to poorly calculated trajectory, he lands outside face first in a wheelbarrow of sopping wet mud. Then, in a concussion-induced daze, nice. Gordy, like a true caveman, flails, yelps, and grunts his way through a crowd of onlookers, uh, including Ned, Moe's Cookie, and the supremely talented Austin Butler. Oh. Uh huh. And then Xavier says, I told you, without mass, we are caveman eating mud. And that's our episode. <laughs> okay, damn. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Damn. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Man, those wiggle thoughts really fucking work. Yeah. Wow. Man. The wiggles yeah. connected to thoughts, guys. Wow. I've done it. Wow. Dan, you said to the group <sighs> chat that you had to take a little breather after writing that oh, synopsis. Yeah. You said it was yeah. dense, and it was. That was it's a half dense. hour of that recap. was incredible. Yeah. That little, was incredible. Yeah, a little chunk. Yeah. yeah. No, I love that. So <laughs> let me ask, <laughs> what were your like? Where'd you stand with math? Because yeah. I was humiliated Ooh. over and over and over Ooh. as I started to climb the ranks with the yeah. numbers. You know what I mean? Oh. As I started move, geometry, literally, go fuck yourself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm literally still scarred. I remember we had to do these fucking graph projects with those uh -huh. fucking graph calculators that literally cost me uh, like what instruments. I needed to yep. like for Texas food <laughs> that fucking week with like Notre Dame. Like, so, and I try to use this piece of shit and I, <laughs> and I literally tried to graph a snowman. And of course you have to switch your graph project so that you can use the coordinates to draw the other person's fucking thing. First fucking coordinate, this cute guy behind me who was like cute and I'm like, his name was Nick, and he he was like, um, excuse me, what do you do with the coordinates? Don't fucking do anything. <laughs> Wait, what do you do if the coordinates don't do anything? Like, they, they weren't forming, like, they didn't fucking form, didn't form a form shape. A, got you, and got I'm you, like, got I don't know what's so hard about this, Lindsay. It's this and this. Yeah. And I couldn't do it, dude. Dang. I couldn't do it. I was so humiliated. I prided myself on my work in school. I mean, we're talking grades on grades where I yeah. would be like, <laughs> didn't share my grades with anybody. Like math was horrible Yo, for me. Math is one of those horrible. real. You've got very <laughs> neutral feelings about horrible. This. Right? <laughs> horrible. No, math is one of those things that will reveal, like you know, um, it'll How separate the are. men from the boys. Yeah. <laughs> like because you you know you can get by with most things in like literature and you know like everything but math. Math you can't fake it. Yeah, you cannot fake it, especially when you get into like algebra. Right, you calculus. can't like bullshit a book report. Like, oh, I thought this and that. Like, yeah. no, no, no. And you can argue. What, oh, what the teacher? Did you get the answer right? <laughs> yeah. How did you get there? Yeah. Show your work. Yeah. 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 Ooh, with creative writing, I, teachers can you can assume it, a teacher just doesn't like you, but math is like, hey, no, you're not that's arriving not right. at the answer because it's objective every time. There's yeah. no it's subjectivity. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. objective. Wait, so what about you, Dan? Yo, I feel I, like you <sighs> prospered. Oh, I loved, I loved, I loved the idea of math <laughs> was not the greatest, was not the greatest, man. And it revealed itself <laughs> to me when I, uh, we talked about it before, uh, like the, I had the done physics, physics class, <laughs> physics class. I had done great. Like I got bumped up to honors physics <laughs> as like a uh, high schooler and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, I got this stuff. Chemistry. Oh, yeah. We got over into to college and I wanted to take that track further was not well versed enough, man. Wow. And I just, it wasn't until maybe like four or five years ago that I dove back into some math and realized I was really not prepared for that that level of math, you know. Wow. Yeah, no, it was tough. Dang. It was tough. But how could you uh, diagram a snowman or like. Oh, no, no, <laughs> do no. A snowman that, now plotting. I'm amazing with that now. Oh, so I God. dove I dove back into calculus because mm -hmm. I was like, I don't want this defeat. 
I, this was the first time I really had to recognize that I could be better and I could focus way more. So I started diving into it. Now um, on like After Effects, Adobe After Effects, you can kind of plot like shapes to do these different mm. movements. So it benefits me for like motion graphics. And so I went back into learning how to just code an expression without dragging and moving something on a screen. You can plot things out with yeah. math using like sine and cosine everything. And yeah. it's really cool to have a reason to use it. It's just... Back in the day, I was like, I literally will never use this. This was before I was doing motion graphics, so I'm like, it doesn't matter. Mm. But there are a couple applications to that stuff, and it, it feels good. It feels like a superpower. That's so that's so cool. Dan, Daniel's over there doing sine and cosine. Yeah, I don't. And we're watching TV, <laughs> <laughs> thinking about my feelings. Okay. Bruh. Uh, I love math. I loved math. I was good at math. I was always a year or two ahead in math. I was mm -hmm. the cookie. I was like in eighth grade, in seventh grade. Like I was mm -hmm. always ahead. Loved math. Um, you know, but then got my fucking GED and never did it again and can't remember any of it. Um, and, I, and I had that thing growing up of like, even though I was good at it and, it, and I actually did enjoy it, um, I did have that thing of like, but I'm never gonna fucking need this. And then I didn't do math for years, forgot all the formulas, all the shit that I knew. And then in life, it actually comes up sometimes. Like, it comes up sometimes. There are okay. reasons to know certain formulas. Like, yeah. and no teacher really landed it home for me. Like, no, no. You, you might not see it now, but this shit will come up. Some of this Certain will. Fields, yeah. yeah. Even just plotting, like, uh, you know, finances for yourself. Dude, okay, how yeah. much do I have? How much will I need at this point? Yeah. How many cheat days can I take to still get the same, you yeah, know, effect? Like, like math is there. And I, I just kind of love and think math is so beautiful. Not, not the math I do, but, like, math is a language of our physical universe. Mm. Like it, yes. it that's up, the objectivity of math is, yeah. it is mm -hmm. math, scientists, mathematicians, they can use math to describe literally very physical things in our world, atoms mm. and things like this. I find that fascinating and mm. beautiful. Like math has a fucking like spiritual, crazy language to it. Yeah. And like um, a synchronicity or like a, like, um, like I call it geometry and other things. Like it's mm -hmm. literally geometry, but like it can make, um, like patterns and center. Oh, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, whatever that. Yeah. No, I mean, like, I mean, you're dealing with harmonies, like any, anything to do with a wavelength. So even yeah. like sound pendulum movement, like all yeah. of it can be plotted and anticipated. So you yeah. don't go into something and say, oh, it didn't do what I expected. That's because you didn't do the math. You could have right. done the formula if you wanted to. How detailed do you want to be? Do you want to live your life, you know, writing out a formula for everything? You'll probably move very slow, but there are certain, when the stakes are high enough, you better employ some math mm. to figure out whether like it's like like, like a freaking intersection. Can we please figure out how to <laughs> can create an intersection before we do another bad one? I mean, yeah. and plus every shape you see is math. Yeah, like every yeah, everything can be described shape. in math in yeah. the language of math. Like every shape can be described in formula in math. Like it's it's yeah. amazing and language too. Like like it's it's so interesting when when people will look into okay what you know what came first like language or these these things that exist in the finite world and it's like even if we didn't have language to communicate things uh we could use our eyes and see okay there's an obstacle there in this place or either look over here and say oh there's three obstacles here which one do you want to choose even if we didn't have english language to communicate to each other it's like okay i see the math that's going on i want to take that single obstacle versus Three, or if it's like two, mm -hmm. you know, blocks, cinder blocks. Yeah, so doing a little equation. Yeah, a little equation with weights and stuff like that, mm -hmm. so you can make your decisions. Like it's always there. The math is there, whether you mm -hmm. want it to be or not, and mm -hmm. you come up with language to describe the math it, that you're experiencing. Exactly. That's what math fucking is. Is very brilliant people came up with these ways to describe these physical processes, the fucking moving of the planets, how to put a satellite in yeah. the fucking orbit oh, yeah. and have Projectile it work. Motion, all of it. Yeah, like all of it. They they came up with, they they saw the fucking language. I mean, Einstein, E equals MC squared. Like they came up with the way yeah. to describe something that is occurring, yeah. but through the language and of math. replicable results. Rep yes. Replicable results. So you'll yeah, get the I mean, same thing every time. Faci like, do, fascinating. So much respect for medical math. Medical care. Can't do any of it. Oh, yeah. Like yeah, medical yeah. care and math and like yeah. all of the things you have to be able to calculate so quickly in oh, yeah. such, you know, small periods of time but, if it's an emergency or but something. Thank goodness that we have brilliant people out there um, who discount all of modern math and science like Terrence Howard who can show us the way. <laughs> Good Lord. 
I mean, hey, you know, it is what it is. But you do need great <laughs> thinkers to think up new ways of looking at stuff. I love when people push new perspectives. You do. But sometimes you can get a little, little far away. It's better than pushing in the sauce. cocaine. I mean, hey, you know, you know. One times Math. one equals two, man. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Math. Yeah. So, okay. So those were your experiences with it. Yeah. Terrible. Um, Loved it. And terrible. now I can't do any of it. Yep. Can't even Yo, do a simple the, equation the thing, in my head. Though, uh, it's tough because a lot of those formulas... It also took me, because I'm a, a smarter, not harder type of guy. Yeah. It's only been recently that I can approach math in this new way because we have access to the internet. And I know, okay, just because I can't retain these formulas that everyone's going to forget. Once you stop using those formulas, yeah. you're going to forget. forget it. Now, there are ways to derive it, though. So when you know enough about math, you can be away from the formula and then Reverse arrive engineer at Reverse engineer the formula. Formula. That's the, that's the beauty of math, too. Like, yeah. We will forget those things when they're taught to us like it's just, oh, set in stone, finite, right. just formula, remember it. You really want to know why. If you can think through it, yeah. It's you worth, can arrive to the worth formula. Remembering. And nowadays with ChatGPT and stuff like that, you can just say, hey, spit out all of the, uh, the you know, the, the derivations of position. Get me to acceleration. Get me to velocity. Get me to da 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 da. And it'll spit out these formulas for you. And then you can just check. And go back to it, just like a calculator. Yep. I would never tell someone not to use a right. freaking calculator. Right. Like, and people are like, oh, you're cheating. Like, that's the way it was in elementary. But right. it's like, really, no, use those those quick functions. They're there for a reason. You want to do a power equation, use it. And now with math, just look up the formulas on freaking ChatGPT. Know that they exist there, but don't feel like you got to keep it all up in your mm -hmm. head. I yeah. think at higher levels, people aren't really. Woo, busy. that is a can load off, dude. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I don't have to remember these formulas. Yeah, don't feel stupid, guys, Woo! if you don't remember all those formulas. Because hey, <laughs> yeah, you might feel stupid if you do remember all those formulas. Because <laughs> you're the no stupid one. Yeah, you gotta Not put us. other shit. You need other shit to fucking think about if you've got all that in your head. Oh, um, and on I, that view, oh no, I want to oh. take us on a just a quick non sequitur, oh. but kind of sequitur, whatever. Um. <sighs> Listen, I watched this documentary on Netflix on the Cold War, okay? So just the USSR, Jesus. Dr. Xavier, this okay, reminded me okay. of it. And it was a little fascinating nugget that I want to bring to this podcast really quick. Mm. Um, so we, we all have heard of the fall of the, the Berlin Wall, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Like, yes. we all know it, right? Like, mm. oh, uh, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that wall. Mm -hmm. And like, this was before any of us here were born. You were born. Um, <laughs> That's, right. That's right. I was 10. But it was I in, was 10 it, at the time. It, no, it was in 89. Um, the fall of the Ber Berlin Wall. Oh, I Wall. was born. Yeah, that's what I mean. It was 89, like, yeah. So, <laughs> I, so I don't know. I've heard of this event my entire life, right? Uh, but you kind of just hear of it as part of history. In my head, this was an action that occurred because of some top-down, right, like diplomacy negotiation of taking down the Berlin Wall, right? Uh, this documentary called Turning Point on Netflix is an amazing kind of long view of the Cold War. Um, I thought I thought this episode was so moving when they got to the actual fall of the Berlin Wall. Um, the images I've seen, which is people standing on top of it, chipping at it. Um, it didn't come from a diplomacy. It happened f more from the bottom up. So what happened was uh, Gorbachev was the head of the USSR. He had come in and started to realize the, f the people were changing. The USSR was changing. He needed to impose uh, reforms, open up some of the, the iron wall of the government, start being more transparent. He believed in communism, but wanted to reform it for the people and thought they would um, continue to believe in it. Uh, Berlin was divided. No, fuck that. I'm going to the West Side. <laughs> <laughs> Berlin was divided east and west, and Germany, the rest of greater Germany, was uh, part of the USSR. Mm -hmm. All of it, um, surrounding it. Yeah, so it was all a of it enclave. surrounding it. So the west was a little enclave. Um, I, I just thought this was so fucking fascinating. So the wall divides Berlin. Um, uh, this, this, the, the, the head of the German Democratic, they were called Democratic, but they were communists. The head of Germany at the time uh, didn't like Gorbachev. He didn't like the reforms. He was a staunch authoritarian. Um, and so he wasn't implementing any of the reforms. Um, this new guy comes into power in Germany, uh, not through elections, but through fucking being chosen. And he says, let's appease the people. Uh, the people in East Germany had been wanting to travel. They had had a bunch of people traveling illegally and escaping the USSR. They had a big problem with that. So he said, 
he said, uh, let's let them, let's give them a little, basically a little sprinkle of freedom, mm -hmm. but really we're going to stay authoritarian. So he tells uh, his head of the press to, in a press conference, say they are going to allow East Germans to travel if they apply for travel. And basically their plan was to not approve anybody. Um, but mm. let's put out this international press release that we're gonna let the we're gonna let our people travel. We're not authoritarians. Uh, the fucking press secretary, this this guy, he he just didn't speak correctly. In this press conference, he said, uh, at the end of this international press conference, he said, "Oh, and by the way, um, East Germans can now uh, travel. They can travel freely between the borders." And a reporter raised his hand and asked to clarify. He said, but like, what does that mean for the wall? Like, wh what does that mean for the checkpoints? Uh, like, is there a timeline for this? And the guy just wasn't prepped. And he said, no, effective. He said, effective immediately, people can travel. But it was a mistake. Okay. But he put that out into the public. So all mm. of a sudden, the public starts showing up to the wall. And they're at the checkpoint and the people guarding the checkpoints are all fucking confused. And then they're like, they're calling their, their people like, Hey, we've got 200 people here saying they're allowed to cross. I haven't heard anything about this. And the people on the other end are saying, no, do not let them cross. Like, absolutely not. So this pressure is building around these checkpoints. All of this happened within like a day. Mm. Um, this pressure, just this human pressure, not violence. Just hundreds of people at these checkpoints are standing there going, no, we were told we, we could fucking cross. Um, and so basically it's the Berlin Wall, like the reason it actually fell was because that little mistake of word and then the human pressure, it took one guard to kind of go, fuck it. And disobey his own orders and the, the border he was supposed to hold and starts letting people through. Mm. And as that started to happen, like this was the fall of the Berlin Wall. Hmm. It was this human pressure had to happen, bottom up movement and watch this documentary if any of this is interesting to you. That episode was so fascinating wow. to me to watch. Hmm. the people cross and they're so surprised and like they said it turned into like a five day party on the other side of the Berlin Wall wow. because it was like the biggest moment of their lives but I don't know I just thought that was so fascinating in yeah. my head that was always a negotiated change yeah. and hmm. it wasn't it was a fucking human hmm. change that, that, that doesn't work anymore oh well Ah, dude, it's tough because there's been a lot of people pressure on a lot of uh, political issues. situations, issues. And yeah. And nothing happens. I mean, I know. Yeah. That disconnect level. Yeah. That disconnect from the human, the, the public mm -hmm. need and the actual because meeting they've of insulated it. themselves so far from pressure. Exactly. Like, there's they can't so feel many categories and people that before yeah. it's going to hit them. Like, exactly. It's, they've just in, like insulated the hell out of themselves. Exactly. Yeah. But damn. Anyway, yeah, I'll yeah. check was, that out. Was, That's awesome. Yeah, I was just fascinated. I wanted to share that on the pod because I've been like thinking about it. It was such a yeah. moving fucking episode. And I don't know, history can be fascinating when you look back at this shit. Can be. Um, yeah, but it's going to piss piss you off first. Definitely. Oh, definitely. It's going to piss you off first. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, anyway. Do we have any um, got mo mooth tubes? Tips. Got a tube? A uh, mooth tube? Okay, math tips. Um, if you are, you know, struggling with math, as I did, um, get a tutor. Oh, gee, yes. Love a tutor. Yes. Matter of fact. Oh, no, 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 go. No, I, matter of fact. I, it, so I started doing like computer science um, recently. I didn't mention that was a part of why I started looking into uh, a couple science. of the motion graphic stuff. And oh, yeah. Just getting back into calculus uh, because you, you kind of need it for that. But I needed a tutor. I was so catalyzed by that bad experience uh, at the college course physics mm. that, you know, before I came back. You were like, humble enough to get a tutor? Yeah. And and it really wow. helps. I had spent my entire life not taking tutors on things because I'm just like, oh, it's all up there. I kind of just got it. Yeah. But it's like, no, those tutors yeah. help. And some stuff you just haven't been enculturated to understand properly. Like mm -hmm. you can learn those formulas and regurgitate them all you want, but you got to learn the real you know, inner work. Kyle Swan, so. Bully Loomer, he he like tutored people in college for chemistry and fucking mm. math and shit. Yeah. Smart fucking guy. Yeah. How? Yeah, he was tutoring people for chemistry. Sweaty right? ass Kyle? Sweaty stoned Kyle. 
<laughs> Sweaty stoned humping Kyle. <laughs> humping Kyle. Yeah. Go humping Kyle. Yeah. That's Lit. good. You got a tip? You got a math? Oh, tip, tip for math? Oh, well, that tutor one's really great. Um, but yeah. I will say, uh, revisit some of the things you learned in math class. And sometimes it's just a nice, it, it may sound like it's not, but it's a cool mental break to get back into deciphering some of these things. Because it's just another another language. It can be a little bit, it can be fun, especially if you learn uh, applied concepts that you care about. A refresher horse. Mm -hmm. Um... Thanks for being here. That was a great rewatch. Uh, my um, math uh, tip for you listeners at home is um, you plus us equals this podcast. Equals. Hey. Yep. See you next week. Bye. <laughs> Peace out, guys. Yeah. Hey. Thanks for watching this week's episode. Uh, Special guys, shout out. is it time for... <laughs> Super, super friends, friends Thank you for being patrons. Thank we you. love you. Special shout out. Thanks for making this pa uh, yep. th this podcast possible. Go to patreon.com slash nedspod if you want more from that us part. and to support us. We love you. Love Thank you. you. See you next week. Bye.